بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد so we'll carry on to this evening إن شاء الله تعالى with the explanation of the important lessons for every Muslim man and female by Imam Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz may Allah have mercy upon him and Alhamdulillah we have spoken about the first pillar of Al-Islam which is Al-Shahadatan we have explained based upon the book likewise taking some fawaid from the Risala of our Ustad Abu Iyad Amjad Rafiq Havidahullah Ta'ala may Allah preserve him so uh, as I have promised last week today we're going to go through the Risala of Abu Iyad Havidah Ta'ala to mention uh, the proof of the prophethood oh before that we take some fawaid about the meaning of Muhammad the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam and as we have mentioned that the first pillar or the first pillar of Islam there's two parts the first part ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah and we have explained that the meaning of a bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah meaning that you make the religion sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you worship Allah sincerely naam and it has two pillars negation affirmation likewise has the conditions seven conditions we mentioned them as well as well likewise it has the nullifiers so the meaning of Muhammad the message of Allah وسلم, we mentioned that <coughs> that he was sent to everyone to mankind and the jinn and that to obey his commandments and that to believe what he came with and to follow his commandments and to stay away from his prohibitions and not to worship Allah except with what he has legislated so it's not just to say and you don't understand it you don't implement it now this word is a tremendous word is a heavy word and there is a meaning for behind it there is uh, conditions to it likewise Muhammad the messenger of Allah has two conditions one of them that you accept that he, his message that he came with likewise you accept and you believe he was a servant of Allah he has no share in Allah's divinity whatsoever نعم. so Abu Iyad may Allah preserve him bring some nice fawaid that we can go through inshallah ta'ala uh, so he mentions here the meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned some points believing in the prophets and the messengers Prophet Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Wasallam he was the last prophet نعم. there was many prophets and messengers came before him started with Nuh Alayhi Salatu Wasallam all of them called to Islam upon the foundation of pure monotheism as has preceded as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهُ وَاشْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ we have sent a messenger to every nation proclaiming worship Allah and stay away from the ta'ghut likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِ إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ that we have not sent a messenger before you O Muhammad except to reveal to him or we revealed to him that there is nothing and no one worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all of them came with the same foundation pure monotheism testifying to the messengership of Muhammad incorporate believe in all previous prophets and messengers rejecting any previous prophets sent by Allah is a rejection of prophethood in principle now if as Allah mentioned the meaning of the verse that those who accept some prophets and reject some prophets Allah said those who accept some prophets and reject some they are the true disbelievers likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the people of Noah rejected and denied and disbelieved the messengers even though we know they had one messenger Nuh because in principle if you reject Nuh you are rejecting all the prophets and messengers who came after him why because all of them came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they came with the same teaching from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you believe in all of them if you reject Jesus automatically you will reject Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and vice versa Naam, all of them as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the example uh, between him and the Prophet and messenger that came before someone that built a nice house and everyone was visiting the house and 
uh, analyzing and he said this house is so nice so beautiful but there's a missing brick and he said I was a missing brick Naam. he was the last messenger والسلام, who came to complete the Islam of the previous Prophet that's the first thing the second thing he mentions here may Allah preserve him intermediaries of conveyance not worship we have to understand that there are prophets and messengers that are intermediaries between Allah between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in conveying the message not in worship نعم? in conveying the message the prophet Muhammad والسلام, and all other prophets and messengers were intermediaries of conveyance نعم? تبليغ. only they simply conveyed the revelation of Allah and did so with integrity they faithfully performed the duty they were entrusted with they thought beneficial knowledge and righteous actions whilst giving people a glad tidings and warnings now they were upright truthful they were noble in morals uh, who did not fall into major sins they are not intermediaries who are worshipped or through whom worship is channeled to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not possess any divine attribute nor do they call people to worship them now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he sent the prophets and messengers to call people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so intermediaries meaning they convey the message to us because as you have mentioned that we know naturally that you should worship your creator now you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but now you know the guideline now your guideline cannot be your feeling because your feeling and my feeling are different that's why based upon Allah's wisdom and mercy did not leave it up to our intellect and feelings to come to conclusion what is the method to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why he sent the prophets and messages giving a glad tidings and giving glad tidings to those who believe in his prophets and believe in him and warning to those who turn away from his teaching from him and his, from his prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and if you notice the brother mentioned may Allah preserve him Ustad Abu Iyad that prophets and messages are truthful honest men of honor Naam, they are men of honor and they never call people to worship them or you don't say <coughs> you worship Allah through them meaning that you don't call up Allah directly no if my servant asks about me I am near they said they said subhanallah in this verse Allah never said to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say to them I am near because Allah doesn't want to put no one between him and his creation he said if they ask about me I am near he didn't say say to them I am near no I'm near Naam you call upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah is near to us with his knowledge he knows everything and he sees everything and he is everything Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he's above his creation now so the Christians have lied who claim Jesus والسلام, called to his own worship or to the worship of his mother Mary now Jesus will declare himself innocent of their worship and free from them on the day of reckoning likewise likewise they have lied who ascribed or ascribed evil things to the prophets and messengers now Jesus والسلام, the son of Mary never called people to worship him now even in according to their book now, according to their book, he called people to worship God. He himself, he worshiped God. So God worshiped himself. He himself, he, he sought aid from the Father, which they say the Father. And, and even this term, like, as one of the scholars mentioned, this term is ambiguous. The, 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 the Israelites used to use it, meaning as Rab, because God take care of all of us. And if someone take care of you, he says, my Father. And, but we don't use it because why? It's something ambiguous. Uh, Allah is our creator نعم. Allah is our Lord so Isa والسلام, he worshipped نعم. he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone both in the, based upon the Quran and the, the Bible but you know Allah, if you show them many examples likewise if he's God how come he doesn't know the hour when he was asked according to Mark 13 32 Jesus was asked who knows the hour the day of judgment he said no one knows it not even the angels in the heaven nor the son but only the father and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if they ask about the hour say no one knows except Allah so both of them came with the same teaching no one knows the day of judgment except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if Jesus was, a, was God and by definition God knows everything therefore we should have know 
when the hour will be established. But they say no, he was a man and a God at the same time. So when he says he doesn't know the hour, that is his human nature. But as God, he knows the hour. But the question we ask them, the Christians already accept that Jesus as God is not the Father. The Holy Spirit, which they believe is God, is not the Father. So when Jesus said only the Father, clearly is excluding himself, both nature, God or human, for the sake of argument, and likewise the Holy Spirit. So we're speaking the truth, Jesus or you? Jesus said, the Father is greater than I. But there's no one greater than God. Jesus, I saw him in the Bible, never spoke about his, the half nature as they claim. How come Jesus never spoke, he said, you know, I'm, I have half nature of God as well. Do you remember that God have nature of me? It's bigger than me as well. He never spoke about it. If you tell me, I mean, Allah have mercy upon him. Mentioned that the Christians like the Shia, the Rafida, they go to any clear verses and they leave the clear verses. The clear verses that go and guess they believe, they will turn away from it. The and the clear verses, they go and try to explain it. I and the Father are one. But if you go down, he says, just as I and the Father and what? I will pray, I will be my disciples one. So what disciples are God too? Now, one mean in purpose. God called people to worship him alone. Jesus and himself came with the same teaching. To worship God alone. Now, to worship God alone. So Jesus and himself, likewise, he never called people to worship his mother Mary. Now, because in Islam, if you direct any act of worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though you don't believe that thing to be God, to be the creator of the heavens and the earth, you are taking him God beside Allah. For example, if you uh, direct uh, prayer to the tree, say I'm gonna pray to the tree to, har to remove harm and to save me and to aid me, but I still believe the tree is not the creator of the heavens and the earth. You still what? Taking that tree as God. Why? Because you are directing something which is specific and exclusive to God, to other than God. So therefore we're taking that thing as God beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know we know the Catholic Christians do that. They pray to Mary. And likewise, you mentioned a good point here. Of course, the Bible, the prophets and messengers were evildoers. Now, what's his name? Uh, David, he was a liar. According to him, he was a, a fornicator. He was a, a Aaron. Aaron started making uh, false gods. Now, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Suleiman. Suleiman starts, he fell into worshiping idols. Well, Billah. Lot, he stepped with his own daughter. That's not true, it's Kelly. Abu Iyad mentions here, Hafid Allah Ta'ala. As for the negative portrayal of the prophets of Allah in the past scriptures and the descriptions of evil deeds to them, then all of it comes from the fabrication. fabrication of the poison pens of the scribes. All the prophets and messengers were noble, upright, righteous men, which is a logical argument. Now, if a liar comes to us and he says, the prophets of God, all of us will reject him. Say, you are the biggest liar, tell me, now tell me you're a prophet. You're just getting worse. Nah. That's why based upon Allah's wisdom and mercy and justice, he chose those who were known amongst their nations to be truthful and honest. Nah. They're not liars. But if it's a liar, if you can well, you get it worse, my brother. Now you claim to be a prophet of God. Nah. You see, so they were right, rather, that's why the prophets and messengers, according to the Quran, they make a logical sense to be a prophet of God. Nah. All of them, they were righteous and good prophets, uh, men, nah. uh, honest. So he mentions here that they conveyed the message, they were masoom, secure from falling into major sin. As for and minor things, naam, because he mentioned sins here, but it's errors, naam, because as one of the scholars mentioned, Sheikh Salah al Sheikh, minor sins are categorized into two. One of them, even is a minor sin, can what? Invalidate someone's prophethood. The other one, which is errors, from the human nature to make mistakes or shortcomings, naam. So he mentions here, he says, uh, their minor sins, which is their shortcomings or errors, might comprise of mistakes and errors in judgments, such as choosing the least beneficial of two beneficial options, for which an ordinary person would not be blamed. This is the Islamic position regarding the status of the Prophet and the Messengers. Not like the Christians who Allah and his Prophet Muhammad said he was a sinner. That's Kelly. For some who's a sinner, I would be lamenting that. 
He said, because he said, seek forgiveness. Seeking forgiveness does not necessitate you are a sinner. Naam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, um, commanding us, naam, to seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, inni atubu ila Allah fil yawmi mi atamarra, I repent to Allah in a day, 100 times. Why? Because the prophets and messengers, as a Sheikh Saleh al Sheikh, one of the Muslim scholars, may Allah preserve him, mentioned that the prophets and messengers, when they notice Allah's blessings and Allah's favor, Allah's mercy that has bestowed upon them, and they look at themselves, they will come to know, regardless how much worship we will carry out, we will never be able to repay back Allah for His blessings and mercy. So we will fall, into, we will fall, we will fall naturally into shortcomings. So how do you make it up? By seeking forgiveness. That's why after the Salat, what you say? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You will not steal it, you will pray. You will not kill it, no what? Why? Because you know, regardless of what you do, you will never be able to repay back Allah for His blessings and mercy. Is that clear? Naam. So, Naam. So they were upright, they were truthful, honest. Alayhi salatu was salam. Because every prophet is a, he's a fornicator, he's an evildoer, a liar, uh, worship idols, making people to worship idols. So those prophets are to be examples for mankind. And then they have the guts to speak about our, about our Prophet Muhammad Now, and using their book as a criteria. Your book cannot be used as a criteria to determine what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did was right or wrong. Because according to you, a for, your Prophet can even call people to worship a false God, but still a Prophet of God. So what make him, so what make him a false Prophet then? When he starts calling people to worship one God, he becomes a false Prophet. Look at Junoon. As the Arabs say, Al-Junoonu Fununu. Now, I'm craziness and foolishness is a excuse with some people. Now, so the third one, they are chosen. Now, they are Mustafun. Ikhtarahum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istafahum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has chosen them. They are not philosophers. The Prophet and Messenger are not philosophers. Now, or just a wise man with a strong sensory perception coupled with the creative imaginations and a strong leadership qualities. Rather they are chosen chosen and honored by Allah to convey his message. Naam. So prophethood cannot be earned or acquired or acquired. Naam. Meaning you cannot go to inside the cave and just wait for no. Allah chose. Naam. Allah chose the prophets and messengers. But when he chose them he will give them what? Criteria to distinguish them from the false prophets and the true prophets. So they are not philosophers. And they do not contradict themselves as the philosophers do. They come with their ideas, with some of them corrupted and, and so on. Prophet and Message are the best example, all of them, from Nuh ila Nabi ila Muhammad. So our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah uh, mention them and, and uh, bless them and uh, nah, shower them with His mercy. Nah, and the philosophers are, they're full of contradictions and uh, ignorance and confusion and misguidance. So he mentions here the effects and influence of the teaching of prophets and the messengers are unequal and rivaled by anything put forth by the philosophers. Now that's why you are not in need to use a philosopher's argument to uh, defend the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now uh, the best example and the best argument is in the Quran and the Sunnah. Now that's the best argument. Why? As Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned the argument that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, everyone can understand it. Someone that studied in Harvard University and someone that works in a, in a, as a farmer. Why? Because Allah is the creator of everyone. Not just, Allah, Allah, Allah did not just create the, only, the, the person that uh, studied in Harvard University. So his message is for everyone, therefore his message will be clear for, to everyone. Now I'm not so com complicated. Yeah, and such as Noah, Noah alayhi salatu wasalam, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad has been made great among the nations. And, the, and, and, and of the last of them, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, is the most remembered and the praise indicated the truth of his name, which means the praised one. Naam, Prophet sallam, how many Muslims following him? One billion, one point seven or three billion people following the Messenger of Allah praising him, naming their children after him. 
نعم انا انا اني ساشهد ان لا اله الا الله ان ان اذان ساشهد ان محمد رسول الله بريزني نعم في الفيلم هيز نيم سبحان الله نعم هي مانشنز هي او تيتشر ابو عياد ما لا بريزيرفين ذا وان اوف ذا هيستوريانز از نيم جون ويليام ديربا نعم داي ان ذا يير 1882 ان امريكان ساينتست اند هيستوريان روت فور ييرز افتر ذا ديف اوف جاستينيان AD 569 was born at Mecca in Arabia. <coughs> the man who, of all men, exercised the greatest influence upon the human race, Muhammad, in his book, A History of the Intellectual Development of Europe. And he mentions here again, Darpa's view is uh, also expressed by others who list the Prophet as the most influential man in history, above all other famous people, be the, the kings, philosophers, leaders, reformists, scientists, or religious figures. Now, I'm one of them, he mentioned that the most influential person that ever existed is Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. There are some people like in this leaflet, it's a nice leaflet, again written by Abu Iyad, Allah preserve him, about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He mentions here even, for example, Bernard Shu, he said, I have studied him, that wonderful man, in my opinion, far from being antichrist. He must be called the savior of humanity, George Bernard, Bernard Shaw, the genuine Islam. And there's many of them, many of those Orientalists and non-Muslims who study his biography with honesty, naam, leaving the hatred side, they came to the conclusion, all of them, that this man is the best man that walked on the face of the earth. But we don't listen to those uh, haters, Islamic haters, who lie against our Prophet Muhammad wasalam. The fourth one, obedience to the messengers. The prophets and messengers were sent to be obeyed. Their obedience is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We sent no messenger but to obey, to be obeyed by Allah's permission. Whoever obeys Allah has obeyed the messenger. There's many verses and many ahadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has attributes of love. But there's a condition. Because if you want to get Allah's love, it's something special. Because everyone claims to love Allah. But the big question, does Allah love you or love me? And if you want to get Allah's love, not like as the Christians believe, you can commit fornication, worship Satan, and worship, but God still loves you because God loves everyone. What's this? So what is the difference between me and Jesus? If God loves me and loves Jesus. Now, but Allah in the Quran is the most merciful and he loves goodness and guidance for you. Even if you are an evil doer, Allah still shower you with his mercy, provide for you, and still show you the way. Naam. But Allah give us a condition. Allah, You and I, and the Christians and the Jews and the Hindu, and all of us we claim to love God. Say it, O Muhammad. If you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will look, look, look to the reward if you follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will love you and will forgive your sins. Look to the blessings and the reward by following the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam uh, Okay, we're going to go to uh, the proof of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam We're going to go through it quick inshallah ta'ala the, uh, the proofs of the Prophethood of Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam are many diverse and not restricted to any one particular matter Prior to his Prophethood, he was known to be a sadiq al amin Naam? The most truthful one, the honest one He had a beautiful, lofty character, a matter acknowledged by many non-Muslims, writers and historians who praised him. No, uh, so let, let me read this because this one's needed. No, and this one is very needed. The message uh, will go after that to the signs of his prophethood, but this one is needed, no, especially in our time. Our time, my brothers and my sisters, may Allah bless you all. Many shubuhat, many doubts and misconceptions against our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Person might say, why there is many? Why in our time? Because people notice, people are turning to Islam, accepting Islam. And Islam, as Ibn Uthaymin mentioned, that it teaches you don't be slave of any human being, naam, or slave of your desires, naam, worshiping your desires. Whatever you desire, tell you it's good, you do it. Whatever tell you is evil, you stay away from it. 
Now Islam teaches you that the best one that should tell you about what is good, what is bad in details is your creator. Because it's a logical argument. No one knows in details about the camera, what about my phone, better than the one who made it. Ala ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa al khabir. Does he not know who creates about his creation? In order to create the creation, you must, you must possess knowledge in details. Naam? So, why? Because they notice that Islam is spreading. Even though as a Muslim you are weak. Naam? Muslim countries are weak. So who's doing the job? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Akbar. Why? Because he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that which is between them. The king of the kings. Naam? For all, all of us and for the non-Muslims who are sincere out there. Reflect upon that. Muslims are weak. How can people turn into Islam? The, 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 the war that is being established and uh, it's been waged against Islam is so powerful by the media in the West and other than them, even these so-called ex-Muslims coming out in YouTube, making channels. Now it's a big business now. now I'm just claim to be ex-Muslim, many followers you will get. Now, why? Because they notice Islam is spreading amongst in the West. We're not forcing no one with a fork or a spoon. Naam? Same way for people with sword. We're not even using a spoon. Naam? But why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this religion. This deen is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Muhammad is the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim. And his lineage traces, traces back through 21 generations to Adnan, who is known to be from the offspring of Ishmael, Naam alayhi salam, the son, the son of Abraham. He was sent at a time, or at a time, when the teachings and traces of previous messengers had either been lost or distorted. The pagans of Arabia had inherited many of the deities of the ancients and worshipped them alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sibians worshipped the, which is like the stars and the galaxies. The Jews and the Christians had departed from the teaching of Moses and Jesus respectively, alayhim as -salam, and altered their religion through distortion of their revealed books and the accumulation of concepts and belief from other nations. Now, so Prophet came after what? The teacher of Jesus be distorted or been lost. Now there are few people that still had the true teaching of Isa but majority of them changed it. Rather adopted the, the belief of the other pagans. Now so from the start of his prophethood in the year six 10 CE, 610 CE, at the age of 40, for a period of 13 years in Mecca, the Prophet preached peacefully and patiently to the pagan Arabs who held a variety of different beliefs. He invited them to single out Allah in worship and stay away from the false gods. So for 13 years in Mecca, even though his companions was getting tortured. Now I'm, this is, well, I have to read this, this is a clear refutation against the Islamic haters. Those who lie against Islam. Deliberately. Because there's two types of Islamic haters. Some of them are ignorant. We can teach them. The other one, deliberately. They know that it's not the truth what they're saying. They know that it's a pure lie. But they still spread it. Now, bi idnillah, we are here for them. Bi idnillah, wa tawfiqihi wahda. By himself, may Allah give us ikhlas and aid. Now, for 13 years, they tried to kill him. They tried to harm him. And they tried to... Even they killed some of his companions, alayhi salatu wasalam. He spoke against their racism, their ill treatment of slaves, killing of female, newborns, and other misdeeds. He enjoyed benevolence to widows and orphans and frequent giving of charity. Unfortunately, his message was not in the personal, economic, and political interest of the pagans of Mecca. Because it did not meet what they, they want. Go and guess the agenda. So they start hating. Why? Kids used to bury their own daughters alive. Prophet said, no. They have a right to live, just as you have a right to live. And they said Islam came to oppress women. Let's analyze. Before Islam, women, the daughters should be buried alive. Prophet said, no, she has a right to live. She has a right for, to inherit. Naam. So, likewise, they used to mistreat slavery. And back in those days, let's use the term servitude. Because slavery, share where people connected to, European slavery. Now, back in those days, as our Ustad Abu Khadija, may Allah preserve, he mentioned, everybody was enslaving everybody. Now, Zayd ibn Haritha was an Arab man and he was a slave. 
Naam, everybody, it's not because of skin color. Naam, about they used to mistreat them. The Messenger of Allah came and he teaches them, no, these women be like you. Naam, so you have to take care of them. You have to look after them. You have to feed them from the same food you eat. And you have to clothe them from the same garment you, you, you wear. And he said to give charity, take care of the people. He was met with hostility from his people and his believing companions were boycotted, oppressed, tortured, and some were murdered. Attempts were made on his life and he was forced to migrate to what became known as the city of Medina in the year 622 CE. He continued preaching for another 10 years while facing hostility, plots and from the polytheists and various forces who formed allies and became allies with one another and initiated war against him. So imagine th 13 years in Mecca, he's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's been patient with them. Naam, he's not harming no one. They tried to harm him. They tried to kill him many times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to him to migrate to Medina. You never hear this. You know this side of the story? You never hear it from the Islamic haters. Those evil Christian missionaries other than them. Naam, Islamic haters. So 13 years, then he migrated to Medina, alayhi salatu salam. Then in Medina, they went after him, tried to kill him. So he had to defend himself, alayhi salatu salam. And anyone, if you someone tried to harm you and harm your family, and you try your best to stay away from him, tell him, listen, I don't want to fight you, stay <coughs> alone. I'm not harming you. Anyone notice this person is not listening, is going to kill you and kill your family, you're fighting. Any person with a sound intellect, naam, anyone with a sound reasons, so, alayhi salatu salam, so they waged a war against him, being granted permission to ward off aggression and injustice from himself and his believing companions. He only fought to defend himself. So to defend himself and to defend the peaceful preaching so that the message of Islam, genuine monophism or monophism, and perfection of morals and character could be heard by others without any, like preventing the, the, the teaching or the people to convey the message. He never forced a single person to accept Islam and guess his will. Why? One of the main conditions of accepting Islam is your heart. If you accept Islam with your mouth and you don't believe with your heart, you are a moon heaven. That will not benefit you. And you cannot force someone to accept Islam because he can tell you accept Islam by his heart and reject it. As the Shaykh Salih al fawzan may Allah preserve him, mentioned, after inviting the polytheists to Islam, he invited the Jews back to the pure religion of Prophet Moses, alayhi salatu wasalam, through the Quran. They were reminded of their ancestors from the children of Israel, from the Israelites, how they were favored when they adhered to right guidance and how their leaders departed from that guidance, opposed their prophets, distorted their book, entered into magic and uh, inj injustice. He also argued with the Christians and invited them back to the religion of Prophet Jesus والسلام, He explained to them that Jesus was not divine, never claimed to be, and never asked to be worshipped. He explained that Jesus called to the worship of the one true deity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and none other. That, that, naam, so the Messenger وسلم, called the Yahud back to the true teaching of Moses, foundation. Likewise, the Christians. Now to the true teaching of Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. He explained that Jesus called to the worship of the one who mentioned that, that he called to the adherence to the law and seeking salvation through works in addition to faith. Now in Islam, Illa If you want to gain success in this life and the hereafter, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do righteous actions. As Jesus said, according to the Bible, when the young Jew came to him, he said, oh good master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? He said, keep the commandments of God. What is he referring to? To the Mosaic law. What is the Mosaic law? The first commandment, worship your God and love him with your, all your heart. Naam? So he said, keep the commandment of God. That was the best time for Jesus to say to him, yes, easy way, just believe I'm going to die for your sins and I'll be resurrected, you will enter paradise. No, he said, keep the commandments of God. Now, keep what? The commandments of God. And according to Mosaic law, if you do evil deed, no one should be responsible for it. 
as we mentioned in Deuteronomy and Isaac you. If you do evil deed, it will be against you. If you do good deed, it will be for you. Like, like, like what the Quran. Naam. So he said, I've been doing it since I was young. Jesus said, you are like it in one thing. He said, what is it? He said, give your wealth away and follow me. He never said, give your wealth away and just believe I'm going to die for your sins. Don't worry. Naam. So in Islam, just as what the prophets and messengers came before, to believe and do righteous actions could be verbally or physically. And his mother was a just woman, truthful, righteous woman, who was favored, honored, and rewarded by Allah for her chastity by granting her a son without, without male interven, uh, intervention. Now, many from the learned amongst the people of the book accepted the truth, whilst others rejected it, knowing full well he was a truthful messenger and was mentioned in their scripture. The words of the Prophet were only against select tribes amongst the pagan of Arabia, not all of them. The rest of them were waiting and watching to see who would come out on the top upon their conviction that Allah would not give a victory to a liar. Despite all, all these words waged to extinguish his message, the Prophet came out victorious and the entire, or the entire Arabian Peninsula entered Islam during the last two years of his prophethood willingly and without compulsion. Subhanallah. Now I'm without forcing no one, the whole Arab Peninsula accepted Islam. Because he mentioned a good point here. Allah will not aid a liar. Sometimes Allah give a liar a time. Eventually expose him. Like these false prophets that came after, like Musaim al Kaddab. Musaim al Kaddab, Allah exposed him after. As well as the Allah exposed him after. Naam. But Prophet Muhammad wasalam, Allah not just aided him, aided his companions after him, aided his nation after him. Naam. His religion spread out far to the east and far to the west. Naam. All the way to China, to Africa, to France, to Switzerland, to Spain. Why? Because Islam conquered people's hearts people entering before entering people's lands. Now, and he mentions here, good point. His followers were victorious over the great nations of the time, the Romans and the Persians. And we know there's a prophecy. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu one of his prophecies, when he was in Mecca, he was telling his companions, it will come a time when you overpower the Persians and the Romans. And where? In Mecca, when they were very weak. They couldn't even say they are Muslims openly. And the Messenger of Allah telling them, don't worry, you're going to overpower the Persians, the Romans. Naam. They, they, they are scared from just Bedouins, Arabs there. But Prophet Muhammad said, no, you, you will, no, 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 the nation after, no. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, you will. Naam. You will overpower the Persians, the Romans. The great empire during those days. The hypocrites, they start mocking. Say, this person is telling us, we're going to over, we're going to overpower the Persians, the Romans. And we are scared to use the bathroom outside. But what happened historically from the Muslims and the non-Muslims? The, the, the Prophet Muhammad saw some disciples, his companions, overpowered the Persians and the Romans. Clear prophecy, alayhi salatu wassalam. The spread of Islam, that's their doubt. Naam? The spread of Islam, unlike European Christian colonialism, was not accompanied by wholesale extermin uh, extermination of native people. When wherever the Muslim went or Islam spread to, the native people remained. In contrast, in contrast, European massacred and committed systematic genocide and against the native people of the America, Africa, part of Asia and Australia. Because some of them say, "What about Islam? How spread?" No, Islam is not saying. That's why Prophet Sallam, if someone accepts Islam, Prophet Sallam said, "You be the leader over your nation." And you benefit from your own country's wealth. But you share it with the Muslims. How dare you? You compare that to coming to a country destroying the nation. Killing their babies and their children. Taking their resources. Making them poor. When Islam come to Spain, Spain was just like the other countries in Europe. Living in the dark ages. Islam came civilized them. Now, the people of Spain, 
of Andalusia, which is Spain and, 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 and Portugal and part of France and Switzerland, they become the leaders. They become what? Scholars. Uh -huh. Likewise in Africa, instead of come to genocide the whole nation, and according to my knowledge, the only book that has been used to genocide nations is the Bible. Because the Bible teaches it, it teach to genocide the whole Malachite. Uh -huh. So Islam is not saying. People talk about jihad al-talab, offensive jihad. No, that jihad, jihad as Sheikh al-Islam Nutaymiyah mentioned, was not, is not the asl. The asl is to give da'wah, to teach the people. Jihad was legislated out of necessity to protect the da'wah. As the Sheikh Salah al-Sheikh mentioned, if the country allow people to teach and give da'wah, but if they start killing the Muslim scholars and the teachers, so upon the government to protect them. Nah. But not just as people claim Islam come to kill everyone, that's a kadib. If Islam came to kill everyone, how come there's Christians in Egypt? Rather, when the Christians took over Andalus, Andalusia, they were burning the Muslims alive and the Jews alive. The Jews had to flee to where? To Morocco and Algeria and Turkey. Now, so we stop here, inshallah ta'ala, due to the time. Inshallah, next week, we carry on with the prophethood of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu then we carry on with the rest of the pillars of Al-Islam. May Allah give us sincerity. Subhanak Allah, bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa sallam salima kathira. Allah